Dubbed as the superior handgun manufacturer, Connick has long established itself in the U.S. firearms market. In the past, this wasn't the case, as many American shooters were still dubious about the quality of firearms that a Turkish company like Connick could produce. Fast forward to today, we can see many local gun stores displaying Connick pistols, with some dealerships even claiming that Connick guns outsell the likes of Smith & Wesson 15 to 1. For starters, the brand Canik was under the Samson Domestic Defense, which is based in Samson, Turkey, and is imported into the United States by Century International Arms, Inc., a Florida-based company. Right now, Canik offers 44 9mm pistols, 740 S&W, and two 380 auto pistols, with the latest ones being the SFX Rival S and Canik TTI Combat. If you haven't owned a Canik gun, then this video will convince you to get one. Again. This is Ted from Line 45, and in this episode, we will take a look at the reasons why you shouldn't hate Kenick pistols. Before we get underway, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I know it is a chore, but these simple clicks help my channel immensely. Now, let's return to the video. Kenick guns are reliable. When it comes to buying a gun, reliability becomes a prominent factor that can't be overshadowed. Of course, why the heck would you even bother using a gun that flops and malfunctions? For the most part, American shooters trust American guns because, well, they are reliable. Take a look at Smith & Wesson, Colt, Remington, and Winchester Repeating Arms, for example. These companies have already become household names on the market because of their tested and tried guns, many of which have been used extensively by the military and law enforcement departments. However, Keep in mind that the country of origin isn't really an actual determinant of a gun's quality, or, in this particular context, its reliability. A good example is Glock. Glock, being an Austrian firearm brand, has outlasted many American firearms companies in terms of reliability. In fact, the Glock guns soared in popularity because of their no-nonsense shooting capabilities. Expose them to dust, water, or mud, and they can still shoot. Sure. There are malfunctions here and there, but in the grand scheme, those flaws are just overshadowed by the overall consistency of Glock pistols. You can say the same thing to Canik pistols. These guns are made in Turkey, and some people keep on saying that they aren't fully solved due to their quality and all that. Bro, just give the gun a chance. You don't need to buy one to experience its reliability. You can borrow from a friend or rent one, whichever will work for you. Bring it on the range and try firing at least 100 rounds. By that time, you'll realize that what I'm saying is true. And hey, the reliability of Canik pistols isn't exclusive to the likes of SFX Rival, Midi, SFT, or TP9 Elite. All of Canik's guns are reliable. They are manufactured under the same quality standards, so there isn't a black sheep within the bunch. Canik guns have excellent triggers. Striker-fired guns have a make-or-break trigger. Well, that's the trade-off for the convenience they give. We love hammer-fired triggers because they are downright tactile, predictable, and solid. It's their best-selling point, and if such qualities are present in striker-fired pistols, by all means, many shooters will dig in. And believe me or not, Kanik somehow excels in this department. You can't just compare them to stock triggers of Glock or other striker-fired guns in the market. In fact, the trigger on my Kanik SFX rival feels a lot better than the trigger installed in the Walther PDP, and I am not even crafting exaggerated stories. Other shooters can testify to this, and it makes me wonder a little bit as to why other gun companies can't just follow what Canik is doing with their triggers. The trigger systems used in a variety of Canik pistols were copies of other venerable trigger systems, such as the Walther P-Series trigger. The latter is a pre-cocked striker-fired trigger, so in theory, it should work great. Now, if it's a copy, then why does it feel a lot better than the source material? I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I think the answer for this would be the fine-tuning poured into Canik triggers. During the manufacturing process, careful attention is paid to tolerances and specifications to ensure consistent trigger performance across production units. Furthermore, some Canik models feature adjustable trigger components, such as trigger shoe position and pre-travel. These adjustable features allow shooters to fine-tune the trigger to their individual preferences, enhancing comfort and performance. Again, these features and production methodologies aren't unique to Canik, but somehow, Canik simply does them better. Canik, 
listens to their customers. Do you know what Canik's biggest draw is? It's the fact that the company actually listens to its customer base. Well, I am not saying that Canik is picking all those ideas and materializing them as firearms. If Canik is doing that, its reputation will flop immediately. All I am saying is that Canik has the humility to listen to the good and actually has the guts to test and implement those recommendations in the architecture of their firearms. All the latest iterations of Canik pistols have better or more innovative features than their predecessors. What Canik did is adopt most of the highly sought aftermarket upgrades that shooters want and have those upgrades become the benchmark. The high quality factory triggers and optic ready slides of Canik were born from Canik's motivation to deliver guns that their customers will care for. Again, let's put Glock here as a comparison. If you don't have a Glock with a modular optic system, you would still need to machine its slide so that it fits optics into it. At the same time, Glock triggers aren't really that appealing. It's for this reason that 90% of the time, Glock owners tend to swap their Glock triggers with better aftermarket options. With a Canik pistol, you don't have to do the heavy lifting anymore. All that you need is already present, fresh from the box. Canik put, quality over price. For the record, Canik pistols aren't your Raven Arms or Phoenix Arms handguns. When I say that Canik pistols are cheap, I don't mean that they are dirt cheap. Instead, what I am trying to say is that these guns are reasonably affordable compared to their competitors. And it's not just being affordable. Canik knows what's up with their clients. When buying a firearm, I usually prioritize the gun itself rather than whatever comes with it. After all, I am after the gun, not the goodies. But hey, this doesn't mean that I will say no to the add-ons, especially if they are free and built with good quality. This is the part where Canik really excels. They are making good firearms, but at the same time, ensuring that these guns will arrive in a complete package. Basically, when you buy a Canik gun, you won't have to purchase anything in the aftermarket except for the magazines or upgrades that may or may not be necessary for the setup. Let me give you an example. The Canik Meat MC9, a micro-compact, striker-fired, semi-auto, 9mm pistol released in 2023, has an MSRP of $439 based on the current listing I found on Canik's website. While it's true that the price tag of $400 isn't that eye-catching, considering that Ruger guns tend to play at the $300, keep in mind that the Meaty MC9 arrives in a complete package. Specifically, it has 12-round and 15-round magazines, one-finger extension base plate for its mags, one magazine loader, one custom holster, three grip back straps, which are my personal favorites, a punch and tool kit, a cleaning brush and jag rod, and a solid storage case. And hey, let me emphasize again that this pistol is just priced at $439 and put things into perspective. Furthermore, Canik guns tend to shoot above their cost. Again, don't take my word. Go get any Canik gun and try to disprove me. These are some of the most underrated guns, but you can really swear by them. But here's the real question that people should ask. Why Canik guns are affordable in the first place? Are there any mishaps or flaws in their construction? There are multiple reasons why Canik guns are significantly affordable. The brand has a history of producing cloned guns, such as the TP9 series, which is a clone of the Walther P99 and has an operation strikingly similar to the Walther PPQ. We can always draw the idea that the costs related to the development and research have been truncated by Canik because they already use the blueprint of other firearms as a form of reference. However, keep in mind that Canik guns aren't exactly copies of already existing handguns, and most of their newer releases already possess distinct features that make them stand out. Part of the reason why Canik guns are cheap is due to the inexpensive labor costs the company can afford in Turkey. They are way lower than what is being offered in the United States or Germany. But hey, there was no compromise in the construction or quality of Canik guns. So, fair play to Canik for this. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more gun videos like this, just click the subscribe button and notification bell. Take care and stay safe.